So I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Mark Danks. I'm the senior director for the Cubify platform at 3D Systems. 3D Systems is, uh, we basically do 3D printing. Uh, we've been around for about 25 years, mainly doing large industrial machines, uh, aerospace, automotive, medical. Uh, but about a year or so ago, we started moving more into the consumer space. So what I'm going to be talking about today is our Cubify platform and the way that developers are able to connect to it and take advantage of the opportunities that we have there. So this is the, you know, standard front page of a website type thing. It's cubify.com. It's really a place where people can go to express themselves in 3D. So it really is the concept of uh, how do you go in, even if you don't have the experience, you don't know how to model, you don't know how to use CAD or Maya or Studio Max, uh, and yet still be able to hold something in your hand at the end of the day. So we have a number of apps that are here that are done for this, and they're all geared completely for consumers. It's really our things. How do you make it uh, easy, accessible, um, really making it a place where you can express yourself uh, our, our feeling on in 3D printing is why would you ever print the same thing twice? Uh, there's no economy of scale. Everything should have your name on it, your signature, something about you, a photo. And I'll sort of show some of these examples um, about that. So within this example, what I've got there is the, uh, this is one of the product pages. So this is a jewelry. So all of these things, you can go there right now. You can buy, you know, if you want to actually have them. We have everything from sort of designer-made jewelry, so this Icon Snap product, uh, to ones that people have uploaded and provided for sale. The thing that we do is we're both a physical goods space where you actually get the product in the mail and you hold it. Uh, we're also a digital goods space. So if you want to sell or download a model file, you can use that as a starting point or you can use that for printing at home. So why printing for home is interesting for us. As I said, we actually provide a lot of printers. Uh, that's part of what we do as well as Cubify. So I have some examples up here. So this, these are going to be hard to see from back there, but this crocodile head here, was actually printed on our cube printer. Uh, it's $12.99. You just put the model in, you hit print, and wait a few hours, and you get this. Uh, this can be an ABS or PLA plastic. So this is a digital model file that you can download and actually do. A lot of our apps try to do the same thing as well to make it easy for consumers to get out there and actually create things, print it, and have it at home. Um, with the cube, that's our lowest model. It's a single color. It's a cartridge-based system you can see there. Uh, comes in the cartridge comes in 16 different colors, including glow in the dark. So to get a little more complicated, you can take the next step up. That's CubeX. Uh, I don't have a demo of it here, but basically same concept, except it can do three colors at once. So it can actually print those rockets that come out as one piece. The other interesting thing, while the cube is about a five and a half by five and a half cube, uh, build volume, sorry, uh, the CubeX will actually print a basketball. So it's a very large, it's more for advanced hobbyists, it's for businesses. A lot of people are using it to do rapid prototyping, part generation, things like that. Once you get out of that, though, you start to get to our more industrial models. So this here is actually a Z printer. Uh, so I have a couple examples of that. So a Z printer will actually put out a full color ceramic uh, object. In this case, I have this little robot-like creature that's on, on the My Robot Nation uh, app. Um, and it comes out of the printer in full color. The cool thing about it, I have another example here. Um, this is a, one from our Bug Droid app. So you can actually go and customize creature in a little Bug Droid uh, and get it in the mail. So the cool thing about that is it's, it is full color. It's not like you specify a series of RGB values and you only get a mixed, you know, 16 color. It's full RGB, the entire uh, set, it's 24-bit color. The build volumes for these, again, these are more industrial machines, you know, much larger spaces, they'll do larger objects. In general, we don't recommend it for home use, um, and I'll sort of get why, how we handle that on the Cubify platform. The next level up for us then are our project platforms, so that's SLS and SLA. So an example of that, if you want to put your logo and put it on an iPhone case, you can do that. Um, here's an example as well. So this belt uh, was printed on our SLS machine. And again, it came out of the printer this way. There's no assembly required. This just comes out. You can immediately start wearing it. So on the Cubify plot site, you can actually go and order the belt, specify your size. Uh, we'll print it and then send it to you. So that's a whole other aspect then of the Cubify part. It's not just the printing at home, it's the cloud printing where you can go and have SLS, SLA, Z Core, so it's true color printing uh, available to you. So as a consumer, you can have these complicated models, complicated geometries, things, and we will then you submit them somehow, whether it's uploading a model file using one of the apps, we print it, send it in the mail to you, you've got it. So to show what these apps are like, just to give a sense, because that's really the point of what we're trying to do here, is make it so that everyone can go and make these apps, make it very easy to do. So this is a jewelry app, um, which again, it's pretty simple. I don't have any samples here, but it's for uh, printing on the cube. So let me go ahead and I've actually got it running live here if I can find my mouse. Uh, there it 
this. Okay, so uh, it's kind of small on the screen here, but you can see this is a full 3D just running in a browser, you know, just running Chrome. So in our case, we use um, WebGL as our primary 3D display system. So it runs on Chrome, on Firefox. In addition, it'll also uh, call back to Canvas rendering. Uh, so it'll actually run on an iPad on Internet Explorer. Um, I suspect the bandwidth is a little low here, so I'm not going to go too far into this. Uh, but you can basically select a base model, and then you can go and place attachments. So I'll go and see if I can show that um, on this one. So this is that bug droid we were just looking at a moment ago. So here we have the same thing, full color. I can come here and take these attachments, and I can go in anywhere, just put it on and give them a nice hat. Um, in this case, it's slightly different. Um, since the home printers don't do full color very well, this actually goes off to be cloud printed on the, the Z uh, printer. In this case, you can actually come and customize, set his colors, um, all these things. You can come and put stamps on him. So I can give him some glasses. And then, uh, you know, I can put all kinds of things there. I can pose him. This is actually a full skeletal rig. Um, and then when I'm done, I can actually just hit, select my size, hit add to cart, hit buy. It shows up in the mail and you can get something like this. Okay. So again, what we're really trying to do is have these very simple apps uh, that are easy for everyone to use. Back to, there we go. Um, really easy for everyone to use. That it's, you know, no barrier to entry. We don't require specialized hardware or anything else. Um, so this one, Jory, remember that because it's going to be important later. Um, I just sort of showed you what the bug droids can do as well um, with that. So again, so once every, somebody's gone and actually created something, purchased something, the Cubify platform handles all payment, fulfillment, e-commerce, the whole, the whole you know, soup to nuts for this thing. So we have the whole shopping carts. In this case, I've got a cube printer. So if I actually want to be able to print this crocodile head at home, I can use that. Uh, I've got a bug droid, and then I have a, a bracelet that's actually sort of like this uh, belt that I was showing. <clears throat> and then we ship it, we print it, ship it, put it in a box, send it off to the consumer so you can get it, you get it at home. Um, you know, so really it's, it's that it's entire ecosystem for consumers. So up until now, so for the past year, we've had this available, you know, closed door system, not available for other people. So what we've been looking at is how do we actually get that available to everyone else, everyone else who wants to play. I got into this because uh, I'm mostly a software guy, not a hardware guy, and I think it's so cool that I can think up something and I can hold it in my hand. Um, and so why should we be hiding this technology away from consumers? Why don't we make it really easy for all of them to do? So in this case, we've got two avenues into the Cubify uh, platform. One of them is our API, which is really for web developers, low-level people. If you can host a website, you can understand what PHP is, that's going to be for you. Uh, however, that's sort of one extreme. That's a, you know, that's a very closed, uh, not a very open system for most of the world, especially when you're dealing with 3D models. So the other end of the spectrum we have, Cubify App Create, that's really for 3D models. Uh, so if you're a modeler, an artist who doesn't know how to program, doesn't know how to host a website, App Create is the one that you would want to go for. So the basic idea, like any developer program, you create the amazing apps. Cubify platform then can handle <clears throat> all the payments. So again, all e-commerce. So that's all standard billing and everything else. You just give us the model with the customer, you, you add it basically to the customer shopping cart, we handle everything else from there. And I'll explain why you might want to do this in a moment. The printing, so again, the printing for the larger machines, the large SLS, the ProJets, the Z-Core, so doing these, this level of complexity, complicated, very expensive machines, we have fulfillment printing centers all over the world, so we go and do that, we can print locally for them and ship off to them. <clears throat> And then again, we're the ones who actually will put it in the box. So all of that is just taken care of for you by the Cubify platform. The other thing that happens by being a part of the developer program, you have the opportunity to be focused on, uh, sorry, opportunity to be featured on Cubify.com. So we have some apps, but we can't make as many apps as everyone else out in the world. And we're really looking forward to what people can make. So one of the things that immediately people go, they go, great, you know, you're going to handle all this stuff, so what do we get? Um, right out the gate. If you're going down the digital file route, so a digital model you add to the system, someone can purchase, you get 60% of the purchase price. In this case, you get to set the purchase price. Um, it's a digital good. You could set it free if you'd like. You can do 99 cents, you can do $10. Depends how complex it is and how you want to handle that. That's then something that the consumer can download and print and have on their home systems. 
the next extreme then is the cloud printing. So cloud printing, you know, we say, in this case, you get 5% of the purchase price. In this case, it is a physical good. You know, we're going to actually print something. We take all the risk of making sure it actually can be printed correctly and put out. We have all the costs of this, um, and then we send it out. And so in this case, you get 5% of the sale price. In general, the interesting thing for uh, real-world items, especially in 3D printing, the price is basically determined by the volume. So, you know, basically, is the, if the object doubles in size, it's eight times the volume. Uh, everything in our land is cubic, basically. So the volume of the, of the object determines how much, uh, how much it's going to cost. At the moment, uh, when you add a model for cloud printing to our system, we automatically determine the price based on the volume. Um, and then you get that 5%. In the future, we're looking at other monetization schemes, uh, different ways to handle that. So that'll be coming out sort of in Q1. But again, if people have specific ways they think uh, they should be, you know, be able to monetize their, their products and their IPs, please talk to me, let me know, and we can see what we can make happen there. It's definitely, this is a starting point for us, and we're looking how to make it go much bigger in the future. So the Cubify API, uh, as I mentioned, that's sort of the low-level one. It's a very, you know, uh, nuts and bolts type thing. So in this case, it's really for web programmers, um, and you have the, the, you'll be hosting the app on your servers. Uh, so the entire app will be running on your servers. You do all the interface, all the, uh, graphics, all the rendering, all the everything, however you want to do that, that's done that way. Then we have a SOAP interface that connects to our servers when you finally transfer the model file to us, add it to the shopping cart, make it a digital good, all these types of things. <clears throat> but that's also the time when you decide, do you want this thing to be full color printed? Do you want it to just be SLS printed? Do you want it to be SLA printing? And we can work with you to explain sort of what the benefits, pros and cons for all these various things are. So when it goes into our system, again, you know, you sort of say, here's what I want it to be. If it's a digital good, here's how much I want it to cost. And that's all under your control. So the actual API, the way you deal with it, obviously not enough time here to go into the gory details of how that all happens. But it's a fairly standard API. In this case, you've got a public secret key. Obviously, you never send the key, secret key through the client. It's all done through your back servers. That's how you communicate into cubify.com. We use OAuth for user validation. So as you add various functionality, the user basically has to give you know, permission, a three-party leg triangle. So when you actually request, so the way you get into the system for this, I keep going here, oh, sorry, it's also, as we mentioned, it's SOAP with OAuth. So you can go to cubify.com slash developer and register. And what that does is basically says, hey, I, want, I went in on this awesome program. We will send you back the... Uh, public and secret key that then allows you to communicate with the cubify.com platform. In addition, we send you the SOAP definition. We send you full documentation. We also send you a full PHP wrapper around the API. So if you don't want to deal with the raw SOAP internals, which honestly are a little messy sometimes, uh, you can just use PHP. You make a few function calls. You're done. Uh, we also give you a sample HTML app with the PHP submission form. It's just got four little buttons on it. It's nothing complicated. But that'll really show you, okay, here's how you do it. So what we're trying to do is just make the API as easy as possible, as easy to integrate, so that you can focus on the app itself. That's going to be your strength. That's going to be the part that you know, makes you excited, the part where you can really bring your knowledge and, uh, to bear on this. So that's all the API. Again, sort of standard, low-level, you know, web function, web interfaces that go uh, and work that way. The other extreme, then, is Cubify App Create. So what I said a moment ago is, the low level is for uh, web programmers, app creators for modelers, and uh, you know, people who have content but don't know how to monetize it, don't know how to bring it into the system and make it 3D printable. So in that case, <clears throat> we will automatically generate an app for you. Literally, you go to the appcreate.cubify.com, and you create a new app. And I'll show you a little bit of that in a moment. You can upload the base models. So what's the sort of core geometry that's going to be there? In this case, uh, I went and added sort of this house. And then you go to the next part where you can add all your parts. So the attachments that are, make this unique to that person, unique to that user. And so in this case, we put up some doors, some windows, some fence, stairs, you know, trees. And then we're able to make that little house ours. Um, completely unique. And try to dynamically give a sense of not only how big it'll be, what the price is. You can see it in the lower left-hand corner. And the, so the user goes, puts all of your geometry, assembles it all together, hits buy, they get this in the mail. So again, from a artist designer standpoint, you know, we've, uh, we launched it this morning. We've already had people started making apps on this. And you know, the, the, 
we've had jewelry people, we've had house makers, we've had, you, know, you name it, basically people are starting to figure out how they can customize from a starting geometry and then make it their own. The other thing to be very clear is from our standpoint, this is just the initial, you know, version 1.0. Uh, we're continually adding new features. Since the app is dynamically generated, as we add new features, you automatically benefit from it. You have the option of adding them on. So the actual interface for it then, you know, I'm just sort of showing an opening page of where it is. But the main idea behind this is that um, you work in a development sandbox. It's private to you. Nobody else can see it. When that's ready, you submit it into Cubify.com. We'll look at it and validate it and basically say, yes, this does what it, what, what it should. Um, nothing overly rigorous, but it's enough so that consumers can feel confident about what that is. Once that's been approved, then we'll actually, you know, make it public and now it's available for the world. Um, while you're working just in the sandbox, you have the ability to just download the files. You don't need to print them and make sure they work. You can download them, load them up in your model viewer, see if they're what you're expecting. Once you go public, then in this case, it is only cloud printing. So again, that's a difference on what you might want to do. With the API, you can do both cloud printing and digital file for, uh, for sale. With App Create, it's only cloud printing. So in this case, the consumer will never sort of have access to your IP or your underlying models. Um, Again, for this one, as I was mentioning earlier, the app that gets created, which you can sort of see here, the back one page, um, the rendering is all done in WebGL. If the models are simple enough, again, we can fall back to Canvas. So in that case, if you want to make sure that you can run on an iPad, you can run in, in IE. You just have to make sure you don't have huge numbers of triangles in your geometry, and it works fine. Uh, the interface actually on the iPad part of it actually dynamically flips to a touch interface. I don't have any of that up here where you can actually, it's much more touch friendly as opposed to requiring mouse and keyboard. <clears throat> then once it's been approved, it's already, again, it's public. Now the world can see it. And that's when there become opportunities for it to be shown on Cubify.com. We can feature it. We can promote it. All these kinds of things. It becomes posted on our website there for you to see. So I'll have time for some questions here, but definitely you can go off to cubify.com slash developer and take a look at it. And you can send an email to developer at cubify.com. Um, and also we can answer some questions here. A few questions, actually. Yeah, sure. Uh, you're focused mostly on your web services and, and in-house printing. I actually have a slightly different use case. Uh, we're looking at the possibility of taking your standalone cube units and integrating them into as, as part of a solution. Mm -hmm. So the question I have to ask you is, do you have a similar API or a similar mechanism for us to be able to create our own STLs with rigging and everything and put it on the machine without going through the web at all? Yes. Um, so at the moment, you have to use the cube software to do that. But it is completely standalone. It runs on Mac and Windows. Um, no net required at all. But we'll so we'll you start with a standard STL. Yeah. You, you load it in. It generates a .cube file that's then printable immediately. It'll even generate supports for you if you've got complex overhangs and things like that. But is there any way for us to talk directly to the device without going through your software at all? There's no way to talk directly to the device right now. We're looking at providing some libraries, probably would be later like Q2Q3, where we'll allow sort of more direct access to it so you can make basically native apps. Of right, directly that's what we're looking for. We actually need both models because we, we do want web-based stuff as well, but our focus is primarily the, uh, the machine that's right with the system rather than sending off and having it come back by an email. We, 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 it's the people who want things right away. But we have a, a more complex infrastructure, mm -hmm. and this would be a component of that infrastructure. So Yeah, no, it's uh, we've gotten the request a number of times. So I say it's coming in the future okay. um, as we sort of figure that out. Um, the, we just released, we're just releasing the new Cube second generation here at CES. Yeah, I just saw that. Too. Yeah, cool. so it's got, it's like, what, uh, twice the resolution, prints 1.5 times faster. And it's really pretty awesome. both plastics, too. Yeah, exactly. So that's the thing. So now we're sort of like, okay, how are we going to expose that out so it becomes easier for people to use rather than always having to pick up the Cube software? Yeah. One thing we're actually adding to the website, which doesn't necessarily address your question, but sort of gives you an idea of where we're going, is direct print from a web browser to the Cube. And so basically yeah. there'll be a, you know, a button, you hit it, and it'll just route through consumer, you know, if they're not, because the Cube software can talk to the Cube, determine what kind of plastic, ABS or PLA, it'll actually automatically generate everything correctly and just start printing. Cool. Excellent. Thank you. Can you print out both polygons and surfaces, and what's the smallest unit of measure that you can print out? Yeah. So the smallest measure, well, let me, let me, actually, let me do the first one, uh, first question first, it's easier. Um, the, when you have an STL or any standard geometry file, basically you need it as triangles. Um, where it ends up when it actually goes to print, some of them get sliced, some of them do other things, that's implementation detail that you don't have to worry about. 
from our standpoint, our system needs either a .stl file, or if you're gonna be doing full color, a .obj, .vermal file, it can handle either of those. Um, but it's really, you have to be at triangles at that point. That's really all this file format support. Um, as long as it's triangle based, it goes right on through the system. You do have to be a little aware that uh, the mesh has to be watertight. The number of things about like how you actually print something. There are some requirements. You can't give like uh, single-sided polygon or you know single-sided polygons that you might use for like hair or something like that and rendering tricks don't print very well because they're infinitely thin and things like that. Uh, but fundamentally, triangles, STL, or OBJ file. Uh, your second one then was about accuracy. So a lot of that depends on what type of hardware you're dealing with. So on a cube, we'll do 200 micron. Uh, the cube X, depending on your print mode, will do 500 micron, 250 micron, or 125 micron. Um, when you start getting into SLS, uh, Z core, uh, the Z printer, and SLA, we can get all the way down to 10 micron. So if you figure that's basically, you know, 100 microns is about a, layer, a piece of paper, we can go, you know, 10, 50, you know, amount of paper. So if you come and look at some of these up here, you know, you, if you look closely enough, you can kind of see this, the print lines, but it's pretty low resolution. So again, that's sort of what is it you're looking to do, and that's where SLS versus SLA make a difference, as well as the full color. And that's why we have the industrial cloud printing that's different from the home. Great, thanks. Okay. Hi, I'm sorry, I hope I didn't miss it when you were talking, but how many different kinds of material can you do you have that you can use for printing? Because I uh, see the rubber kind of belt that you've got Yeah, there. the belt's actually uh, SLS and uh, plastic nylon. So at the moment we have SLS, SLA, Z-Core, and then if you go out to the home printer, it's ABS or PLA. Um, and we're in the process of adding new uh, materials as we go forward. Those are sort of, these are historically have been our stock printers, what we have, and now we're in the process of expanding out beyond that. So as of today, you have all of those materials right now. Yeah, oh, okay, and one more question. Have you, have you ever tried printing a scaled down human head? Uh, if you actually go to the booth, we have something called Cubify Capture, which will scan your head, and then we can either print on the cube, or we can do a full color print on our yeah. Z printer. Great. So, so that is something in addition, which you know, I, I was focusing purely on sort of, here's how you connect to our platform. There's a lot of these other things, when I said we were extend, we're planning to extend app create or things like bringing in scans, bringing in photos, bringing in, and so things like that, we're gonna be adding to the platform across the board so that it becomes even easier. We do them already on our internal apps, so if you look at the ones that are there now, you'll start to get, you know, start extrapolating roadmap out where we're going and you can get a good sense of the kind of stuff we're adding. Thank you so much. Uh, after creating an app in App Creator, mm -hmm. that's hosted on cubify.com slash, you know, some unique mm -hmm. thing. Um, is it possible to host that on a third-party site? Like, as a developer, can we market it and push it on our own site and then, but have it be yeah. housed on cubify.com? Yeah, so the, the sort of, you know, we do the same thing Facebook does, which is actually all of our apps are uh, hosted in iframes. So they're not, you know, the fact that we're hosting is actually some other server than the Cubify main server. It's viewed as an iframe. So if you take that underlying link, you can do what you want to, and when somebody hits buy, that will then connect through to our e-commerce and fulfillment system. So if you wanted to do that, you could sort of grab the underlying link, promote it, do all that kind of thing without any problem at all. Gotcha. And then um, I, I mean, know with businesses, a lot of the things that they want to print are very proprietary secret parts and stuff like that. How does that work with like an NDA and stuff so that they know you know, if they give you a really yeah. secret. <clears throat> yeah, so there are a couple, a couple answers to that, actually. So if you're just uploading a part and you don't want to even bother with an app, on Cubify you can mark it as private and the world will never see it. It's completely local to you. You hit print, it's, you know, we'll print it, send it, that's the end of it. Um, if it's truly something where, you know, you're like aerospace, medical, or something like that, we actually have our quick parts uh, fulfillment uh, service. It's a full service viewer. It's, that's really for B2B. Um, and they have, you know, different pipelines, much more hands-on of what's going on there. So it sort of depends the level of what you're trying to do with it. If you're doing the app side of things, at the moment, when you add, a, when someone purchases from an app, like using the API, it's not public. Nobody else can see it. So in that case, it sort of is a private model going through the system. So if we wanted to use it as a sort of proprietary thing, you know, you would basically, we would, you would make sure to let us know, hey, please don't ever promote this app. <laughs> Never make it public. And then you would just handle your own access control that point. And then the files would be completely contained within our system the whole way through. Gotcha. Okay, thanks. I'm just wondering what kind of uh, future capabilities are, you know, this is developing into it, additional materials or greater sensitivity to things. Is there any other kind of 
you know, out of the box stuff that is, is happening or, or uh, you know, where you see this going? Um, short form is awesome stuff, um, you know. But they, as I say, we just, uh, this morning we launched a developer yesterday, we launched Cubify Capture. Uh, if you go look at that, that's our whole sort of, take an, you literally take an iPhone, scan it across your face, here's the 3D model, you want to print it, what do you want to do with it type stuff. So that, you know, that's the, that's our first step in that direction. We're heading even farther than that. New materials are definitely on our roadmap for this year. Um, so things like that, you know, we're, these are, from my standpoint, as the kind of the guy who's running all this, we're just at the beginning of some amazing stuff that's coming. We're very committed to expanding out lots of features for things. Yeah. Uh, Android and iOS. Um, yes, uh, eventually we will. The, um, when I say the things like run on iPad and the web thing, they actually run on Android Prime as well. Um, that's more sort of, I use that just because WebGL isn't even supported on iOS devices, so we have to deal with that. Uh, but, if, but it runs fine on an Android device. As far as the, um, like the face scanner I was saying, our initial launch is on iOS, and then we're going to be coming out with Android as well. we'll just, you know, it, in, our, in our case, it, we're not, we're looking to push the platform. It's not like, you know, so these, all of our iOS devices are free. We just give out the app because we want you to engage, uh, engage with our community. So the Android one, lots of people have it. We're going to be heading there as well. Cool. Thank you very much. And uh, let me know if there's any. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, if I were to use this uh, as a rapid prototyping kind of deal, mm -hmm. could you? Would it be possible to build the parts for something, like uh, say the base model, and have a part that fit together? Could mm -hmm. you do that? Yeah. Did that before? Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, so so the so if you want to if you're doing so, well, let me answer two two ways. If you're doing the API, make whatever geometry you want. We just we just need the final geometry. So however you want to assemble that is up to you. If you're using something like AppCreate, there's a base model with the attachments. If you're, one of the features we're going to be adding for things like that is actually having restriction points, so you can only place the things in certain places and orientations. Right now, it's it's either you can attach or not, and it's kind of freeform. Um, but that's one of our roadmap items is to actually say, I want this to go here. It can have only these orientations. And then you'll pick which attachment you want. Okay, thanks again. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you.